The only weapons more powerful than a nuclear bomb are antimatter bombs. And don't let the fact that these guys wouldn't leave an environment highly radioactive fool you, because they are on a whole other level of destruction. Now you may be thinking this is all just sci-fi jargon. Well, I'm here to tell you, it is not. The only thing stopping us from creating such weapons is good old money. According to NASA, this incredibly fascinating state of matter costs $62.5 trillion for one single gram. But why? How would we even make the stuff? And how much would an entire bomb even cost? This is Dynamic Science, and in this video we're going to delve into the explosive world of antimatter warfare. Okay. First, let's try and wrap our head around antimatter itself. According to one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century, Sir Paul Dirac, each particle has a corresponding antiparticle, matching it in every single way, but with an opposite charge. For example, the electron has an anti-electron, or positron, identical in every way, but with a positive electric charge. It is a strong belief among scientists that equal amounts of matter and antimatter was created during the Big Bang. The question of where all that antimatter went, however, is a topic for another video. Three conditions regularly form antimatter. Radioactive decay, extremely high temperatures, and high energy particle collisions. However, clearly there isn't any significant amounts of antimatter around us, so to study it, scientists constructed particle colliders. These particle colliders have produced positrons, antiprotons, antineutrons, antinuclei, antihydrogen, and antihelium states of matter. The biggest one of them is CERN, situated in Geneva, with a large hydrogen collider, 27 kilometers long. The property of antimatter that makes it an excellent candidate for a bomb is its tendency of, well, total destruction. When exactly equal quantities of antimatter and matter come into contact, they annihilate one another, releasing gigantic amounts of energy. This process is the same as Einstein's mass equivalence relationship of E equals mc squared. One single electron-positron pair produces 1.02 MeV of energy on annihilation. In simple terms, for us regular folk, it's freaking huge. Antimatter has an unimaginable destructive potential. Only half a gram of antimatter would be sufficient to recreate the atomic bombs that went off over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and one and a half kilograms would trump the Tsar Bomba from Russia which is still, to this date, the world's most powerful nuclear weapon. And if we up it to a 10 kilogram antimatter bomb, well, that would cause a gigantic explosion equivalent to 230 megatons, in which nothing else even slightly compares. We have all of the technology required to create such a device today. However, what's stopping us is money. To put it into even finer perspective for you, a sniper's bullet made of 10 millionth of a gram would still cost you $600,000. This one bullet would be equivalent to 378 grams of TNT, which is more powerful than a modern day grenade. So the next question I assume you're pondering is why is it so expensive? Well, if antimatter comes into contact with air, which is made of matter, boom! This makes it incredibly hard to store, as it has to be kept in a vacuum even more void than outer space, as even here, there are still some atoms bouncing around. For the first time in 2010, scientists did create such a void to hold antimatter specifically, by creating a magnetic bottle called a minimum magnetic field trap. It uses magnets to keep the antimatter on the inside from interacting with the walls of the device and was created by an international team of scientists at CERN. Unlike nuclear weapons, antimatter doesn't leave much residual radiation. So, over time, in a distant future, we might discard nuclear weapons altogether and use antimatter-powered arms for warfare. 
from one evil to the next. Go humanity. Enjoying the content? Then shout us a coffee. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for your weekly dose of dynamic science.